right, hey friends, uh, let's talk a little bit today about our modes and I'm gonna uh, kind of just take one mode at a time. I'm gonna kind of skip the Ionian, the Aeolian mode, I'll come back to those, but I wanna talk today a little bit about the Dorian mode. And if you've seen some of my other videos, uh, hopefully you can recognize that basically the Dorian mode is the major scale played over its two chord. So what I wanna talk about today is just some concepts that you can use to kind of maximize that. Now. Uh, just playing the C major scale over a D minor chord, for example, D Dorian, is a very simplified way to look at that. But ultimately, what you want to do is look at it almost as its own scale um, and also compare it to, say, a minor pentatonic. And then also some concepts in which you can do to kind of get a little bit deeper into the sound of some of these modes. So when I think about a mode itself, um, I think mostly about a key center. Now you might think, well, I like to think of a mode as a scale, and in some, some cases I do do that, especially if I have to get to a sound quickly. But if I'm playing in a general mode, a general modal type sound, like let's say D Dorian, I wanna think conceptually, because there's a lot of ways I can play that sound. It's not just kind of a linear scale. And what I mean by linear scale, it's just kind of going up in, you know, kind of the scale fashion, like half steps and whole steps. <laughs> Now that on its, unto itself is cool, uh, but there's just a lot of avenues that you can take to explore that sound by not using just a linear scale. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is pentatonic sub, uh, substitution. So if you look at your uh, C major scale, you'll notice you have three minor chords. So you have a D minor, that's the two chord, and that's kind of the sound that we're talking about, D Dorian. But it also has an E minor chord and then an A minor chord. Now, if you play those chords as pentatonic scales, D minor and E minor and A minor, you will not deviate from the key of C, and therefore you won't deviate from D Dorian because D Dorian is the same thing, right? So you can use these different pentatonic scales uh, to get some different colorations. Now, you will get all those colorations if you play just up the scale, you know, in a linear fashion. What I find is when you leave notes out, uh, it kind of highlights those notes a little bit. So uh, if we look at some of these pentatonics and just compare them to the D minor sound, you can see that we're gonna get some different colorations. So for example, if I play that E minor pentatonic, if we look at the notes of E minor pentatonic against a D minor chord, uh, what does that give us? So the E, remember, we're comparing everything to D Dorian. So the E is a two, all right? And then the minor third of that E, because we're playing an, a minor pentatonic, would be against D would be the four or the 11. And then the next note would just be the fifth. Now that parallels the uh, D minor pentatonic also. But then we also get this B note, which is a major six. Now I, don't, I won't get that note if I just play a D minor pentatonic. But if I play an E minor pentatonic, I'm gonna get that coloration. And that is kind of the note that really makes it sound Dorian. So uh, that's one thing that I like to do. And, and you can just create a little shortcut. You can just say, wow, I can just go up a whole step and play a minor pentatonic and I'm gonna kind of get that sound. So there's a way that you can get these modal sounds and eventually all the notes of the scale or the key or the mode without actually playing the, the scale in a linear fashion. And that kind of turns me on a little bit because you know sometimes uh, when you play scales in that linear fashion, it can sound kind of noodly for lack of a better term. Uh, to me, it kind of wears your ears out just hearing all those half steps and whole steps. So by using these different pentatonic scales, uh, you can just get those kind of modal colorations that you're looking for, but you also get some of the bigger intervals from the pentatonic scale. And most of us are pretty familiar with our minor pentatonic scales anyway, so it's a real easy way to kind of get this thing going. So I'm just gonna jam a little bit over a, a D Dorian backing track and uh, play some E minor pentatonics and you can hear what that kind of sounds like. All right, check it out. So here's a little D minor first to kind of just set it up. some E minor. Back into the D minor there.
That sounds pretty cool. So that's one way I can get away from playing a linear scale, but still get some of those colorations of that mode, so to speak, right? Now we can also do that with the A minor pentatonic. Now the A minor pentatonic, if we look at that against the D note, uh, we look at those notes, all of them are basically the same as a D minor pentatonic, except for it has an E in it, which is a, a two or a nine. So it kind of sounds like when you play an A minor pentatonic over a D Dorian type sound, it kind of sounds like a D minor nine. Let's check that out a little bit. Blend it with some of that D minor. Yeah. So you see, I'm just playing pentatonic scales there, but I'm getting all those different colorations. Like with the A minor, I'm getting the nine. Uh, with the E minor, I'm getting the nine and that major six note, which is the Dorian note. So that's really hip sounding to me, and I'm not playing linear scales. So there's a couple of different ways that you can kind of go about doing this. What I do is, is I kind of plant these little mental flags. So for Dorian mode, does, uh, this will help kind of transcend keys too, by the way. For the Dorian mode, I know I can play the minor pentatonic uh, from the root of that sound, in this case D but then I can also play it up a whole step and I can also play it from the fifth. So up a whole step would be E and from a fifth would be A. So I just kind of create these little mental rules. That way, if I'm playing in a different key, I can just apply the rules and I've already kind of done the math. I've done the science, I know it works. So I can just kind of rely on fall, fall back on that. Um, one way I like to kind of go about it also is, you know, you could potentially just move a shape around, right? So if I'm playing, uh, D minor pentatonic. I said, oh, I can go up a whole step and play an E minor. Same fingering. Or I can go to the fifth, which should be A, play the same fingering. So that's one way you can go about doing it. But, you know, this is one of the things about the cage system is it kind of allows you to systemize things just a little bit. So what I do is I practice them in position. So I look at the chords and I go, okay, here's a D minor chord. And using the cage system, that's a pattern too because of the A shape, right? And we said, well, we can also do an E minor. So without moving right in this position here, I can see an, an E minor, something like that. And that's kind of the C minor shape or the open C shape. And that would be a pattern one. So I have D minor pattern two. Then I have E minor pattern number one. And then the A minor in this position would be a pattern four. So that allows me to kind of be able to blend them together. At the end of the day, I'm gonna be playing the whole scale, but I'm not gonna be playing it in that linear fashion. So I can completely systemize this. So in this position, I would have pattern two for the D, pattern one for the E, and pattern four for the A. So I could write that down on a piece of paper, let's say. So I would have two, one, four, right? So if I move up to the next position, all those uh, numbers just move up one. So D was two, now it'll be three. And the E was one, so now it'll be two. And the A was four, so now it will be five. And I can blend those together. And again, at the end of the day, I'm gonna get all of the notes of the D Dorian mode, which is really just C major. And that way uh, I can also systemize it going up the guitar. And I've done this before. This is kind of how I work this out. I would physically write this out on a piece of paper and then kind of put it on my music stand because at first you might get a little lost, like, oh, what is that shape? What is that shape? And you can just kind of glance over and go, oh, I'm in this position, so that's gonna be a 
pattern number two or pattern number three. So if I was here, like here's pattern four, this is just moving it up to the next one, I would have pattern four of my D minor. And then for the E minor, that would be pattern three. And then the A minor would be pattern one. So I use this kind of method a lot. I use this a lot for playing through like two five ones, one four five blues, pentatonic substitution. There's all kinds of ways that you can utilize this. And this is one of the things that uh, I think that people get wrong with the cage system. They just kind of go to a, they just go to a surface level of the cage system. And they go, mm, it's not really for me. I'd rather do my three note per string shapes or whatever. Don't, make, don't get me wrong. Those are great. I do those too. But this cage system just allows me to create a method or a system uh, for kind of being able to realize these concepts. I already understand the modes. I understand that. So when I get a new concept like this concept, this pentatonic substitution, I can methodize it all over the guitar. And that way, no matter where I'm at, with a little bit of practice, I can see all three of those pentatonic scales that are available to me. And I can kind of weave in and out of them and get away from that kind of linear style of playing. We already know we can do that just by practicing our scale patterns. So I wanna kind of transcend that a little bit. I wanna take it to another level. So this is a way that you can use different pentatonic scales. Again, you're just looking from the key center, you're looking at the two chord, the three chord, and the six chord minor. You could also do this from the one, four, five major, but I find that most guitar players uh, kind of lean towards the minor, my, myself included, lean towards the minor uh, shapes because that's usually what we kind of learn first on the guitar. So those are kind of real familiar to us. So whatever key you're in, uh, let's say we take a different key. Let's say we take G Dorian. Okay, so G Dorian is really F. So I would have the two, three, and six chord in the key of F, which would be G minor pentatonic, A minor, and D minor. So if I'm playing in G Dorian, I know I can use those three minor pentatonics. And then of course, then I can use the cage system to kind of methodize them into each box. Now the good news is, is once you do this in one key, the boxes all stay the same. The, the, the patterns and the numbers all stay the same from the cage system. So it takes a little bit of practice, but uh, I really like the sound because, uh, you know, I've been playing pentatonic skills since I was a kid. And, you know, when I started playing modal sounds, it kind of threw me off a little bit because it was a different way of playing. And I guess you could say, well, that's good because you got a different way of playing. And it is good. However, I just played a little bit differently. And I found that I liked kind of that pentatonic sound, you know, that's just kind of where I came from. And I was just, uh, but I didn't want to, you know, miss out on those modal sounds too, because they're really cool. So this is a great method. This is not the only way I play, but this is just a great example of how you can use different pentatonic scales uh, from the key center in different modes. Okay, so uh, you can do this with other modes too, and we'll talk about that. But this is just one method, pentatonic substitution, two, three, six minor chord from the key center of whatever mode you're playing, in this case, Dorian mode. All right, so check it out. I uh, got more stuff coming soon. I'll see you then. Cheers. Also a reminder, folks, I do have a Patreon page and I have all kinds of great content already preloaded and much more on the way. So your support is always welcome. As you can see, it's at Jeffrey Marshall. That's Patreon. Link is in the description. Thanks so much for your support.